Hello, hello. Hello, Barry, how are you? I am great. I am Good. great. Glad to be well, we appreciate you coming on board here. Um, hopefully we have some people in attendance and we'll kind of get started on this. Um, Barry is one of my favorite techie people <laughs> that I love to chat with all of the time. We spend many nights at uh, one o'clock in the morning chit-chatting ideas <laughs> about what we could do on the, the lead gen side and improve basically workflows and things like that. So. Um, so everyone, I'd like to introduce Barry. Barry, can you tell a little bit about yourself, maybe a quick intro of yourself, your team, performance, so on and so forth? Sure. So uh, I've actually been in the real estate industry since I was 18. I'm 37 now, so it's uh, 19 years. And um, I, uh, I started a team four years ago, um, and actually, no, five years ago now. And the whole reason behind it, I sold just over 100 homes by myself. And I, I remember the night I looked over at my wife and I said, I'm freaking miserable. Like, this is horrible. <laughs> this is not what I signed up for. This is not why I'm in real estate. And right. so my metric uh, in building a team and growing was uh, how to maintain a level of success, but then also um, how to have uh, some semblance of quality of life. And now that I'm um, dove into the team and I've got so much structure in place, now I realize why people start teams because uh, now I have the quality of life, but now I'm also uh, selling you know, 200 homes a year and hope to be just over 50 million in volume this year. So um, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a good, um, it's a good thing when the team is doing what it's supposed to be doing. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And right now, what market are you currently serving or where are you at just as a background information for everyone? Sure, sure. So I'm in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Uh, okay. I have um, uh, 16 salespeople and four licensed admin. Okay. Um, uh, the division on the team is such that about seven or eight of them are the ones that I give the internet leads to. They're okay. the newer and then the uh, more experienced agents I have doing all kinds of different functions. So like listing appointments or generating new business for me and things like that. Okay, perfect. And what's uh, maybe the average price range just again for a little background information? So the average sales price in uh, Hampton Roads is about 185000 And okay. um, I have slowly eked up the uh, average sales price. Normally, we're, we're in the 275 to 350 range, typically. Um, okay. we, don't, we don't discriminate. It just, uh, it's just one of those <laughs> things that you know, starts to happen uh, over time. You start to get right. the highest listings. OK. All right. And, you know, you mentioned some Internet leads and things like that. Can you kind of give us an idea what the pillars of your business might be like, you know, some online, what types of marketing channels you're currently doing? Absolutely. So what's funny about me is I really uh, I, I I love teaching. I love speaking. I love helping. But I really don't want to try to be interesting. Like, I don't want to be the agent that. Uh, is like the top member at the country club or the rotary club. And, you know, I'm, in, I'm invited to these events. Like, it's just not, mm -hmm. not who I am. It's not my personality. So okay. uh, internet leads uh, are everything uh, for us because um, it allows us the opportunity to have our foot in the door. And then um, we can show that we're nice people, that we're going to put them first and we're going to do a good job. And then, of course, once we do that, then we get referrals from them. So for me, up until... Uh, I would say probably two years ago, mm -hmm. everything was based off of Zillow, uh, Trulia at that time it was separate and uh, okay. Realtor.com. So I was heavy in the portals, okay. which was fine. Just me and uh, me by myself. It didn't really matter. Okay. Uh, once I started to, to scale and, and grow a team, it really is hard. Let me put it a different way. It's really expensive to yeah. buy enough leads from those portals to support 16 salespeople. Uh, right. And, and so uh, I still buy leads from those portals okay. and still work them. And the, the ROI is incredible, much to the okay. disagreement of you know, agents right. maybe, but the ROI is great for us. Okay. Uh, but then PPC has been huge for us okay. uh, with leads. Um, uh, Google AdWords. Uh, so okay. we have a Google Express account, not the Google, the big Google account, but the, the Google Express. So it's just local. Okay. Uh, I think it's 300 bucks. Uh, okay. You get a Google advisor. So okay. Google kind of tells you what to look for as far as keywords. And um, right. then, of course, uh, uh, sign calls, um, open house leads, Facebook advertising, um, 
um, you know, you name it, we're, we're doing it. We normally get around 700 to a thousand leads a month. Okay. And do you, what, do you have kind of a metrics that you use the number of leads that are distributed per team member, or is that just kind of a round robin or first to first come, or what do you normally do on something like that? Yeah. So, uh, I use follow up boss for my CRM and, okay. uh, we have very specific routing. So on call action, um, each lead source has its own phone number. We'll get into that later, I'm sure. Okay. And uh, each lead source and follow-up boss has a group of agents that I've specifically chosen and trained to work those leads. So, okay. you know, Zillow and Realtor, uh, the cost mm -hmm. per lead is normally between 70 and 130 per okay. lead. So like, right. you know, I want those agents to like either be super hungry or good. Right. right. <laughs> Value those leads because at the end of the day, you're making the investment for them. If you're giving them, you know, 40 leads, you just invested basically, you know, $6,000 into that particular agent. And so you got to yeah. make sure that you're getting the ROI on that. Totally makes sense. Very, very exactly. cool. With the, the groups, uh, the direction of all the different lead sources, if someone's not good on the phone okay. uh, or if someone needs to be in front of a computer, like a lot of times agents will say like, well, I don't answer because I'm not in front of my computer. I don't know what to say. Like, okay, mm -hmm. you either need training or you're not the person I want answering the phone because right. the reality is not always in front of the computer. Right. Um, uh, and so, you know, uh, helping agents realize that they can say, I'm sorry, I don't have that file on me, but uh -huh. let's talk about search overall, you know, transitioning those okay. agents that I group for uh, the sign calls and Yelp and Zillow inbound phone calls and things like that. Okay. All right. That makes sense. And you mentioned follow up boss. Can you give us maybe a little background on the rest of the tech stack and meaning all of your software systems that you might have in place to work all of these leads? Sure. So um, we use uh, a wide array of uh, technology. Okay. Um, I, I love it. Um, follow up boss is the hub. Okay. Um, call action, uh, the leads, you know, when someone calls that all the information about the lead goes right okay. into CRM. Okay. Um, we use Zapier in a big way. I think right now we've got about 150 zaps firing all at the same time. So, wow. um, it's really given my admin the ability to automate a lot. Okay. Um, with that automation, I'm able to use Zapier to slide broadcast. Uh, now you've launched your drip campaign for, uh, voicemails as well. Okay. Um, Riley uh, is a text concierge service that I use. You know, the leads come in, and I'm I'm texting them, or okay. I'm not texting. Riley's texting them. Right. Uh, the drip campaigns via follow up boss. I've written seven months of content, um, okay. highly specific to the lead source and where the lead is at in their process. Uh, and then, okay. uh, website you know, provider. Uh, what's your main kind of? Uh, so right now I've got phase. two. Uh, I've got <laughs> Uh, and I've also got a Wailopo website, um, okay. and um, both of them are incredible in different ways. Okay. Um, and uh, both of them are generating leads. Um, okay. And uh, and so, you know, it's um, and we're leveraging um, uh, Market Snapshot right now uh, in a big way. Because it integrates with your product, and so people okay. are able to text in for uh, CMAs, um, mm -hmm. and then uh, anybody that is looking. We go into follow up boss, we check request a snapshot, and then they're getting market updates routinely. Um, okay. what's on, and the response has been really good with that as well. Okay. Okay. Great. So um, you mentioned basically, you know, some yard signs and things like that. What kind of listing inventory are you carrying currently? Like just on average, ballpark? Sure. So normally I have around 40 active listings. Right now, okay. uh, We've got a good problem. We sold a lot of them. I think we're closer to like 29 and okay. uh, we've got coming on the market this week. Uh, and um, I have a, a full-time marketing employee. So okay. um, all she does is market my listings and coordinate with the sellers. Um, and so the moment that it goes on the market, um, she, you know, she's, we're ordering a post, putting the signs out, putting the riders out. Okay. Um, uh, we have a, it, the, the sign is a very large, large sign. Um, okay. And, you know, it's a rectangle type. Okay. Um, and that's just our team. that's what they do. Okay. So uh, I know kind of the backstory and you, you did it in your little promo video kind of talking about our, some of our early conversations. You're like, man, Jesse, I'm not really getting phone calls. And I definitely don't think I'm getting calls from signs. 
can you kind of fill everyone in on what was that story and kind of your impetus and how things have kind of progressed over the last year or so? Sure. So, you know, let me be candid. I, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I depended heavily on internet leads and I okay. very much did not value the, the inbound phone call because mm -hmm. internet leads were working so well. And, and, um, I had heard about your product. I remember talking to you right. and, um, I normally averaged around six or seven, uh, voicemails a month. And so I reasonably so said, okay, well, Jesse, I don't really know if I need to buy your product because I'm only getting six to seven voicemails. Right. And, um, and, and, you know, for me, I had set up some processes to where uh, if if I use Umail for my voicemail and it was transcribing, it's a human transcribed voicemail, I'm able to forward that. So I still wasn't answering, but I was able to send that to the appropriate parties and right. have them. Um, and so I really didn't see the need for it. And, okay. uh, and so <clears throat> what started to happen was as I began to integrate call tracking into my business, one of the things that I was completely blown away by is the volume of people that are on Zillow, they're on Yelp, Trulia, they're standing in front of the house. Mm -hmm. They have every opportunity to click, you know, contact agent, request more info, text for info. Like right. we had text for info riders in front yeah. of the sign. And I thought that worked great because I was getting 15 a month. I was like, oh yeah, no, people don't want to talk to me, they want to text. Right, and, right. And that, that just wasn't true. I mean, it, in, right. in a massive way. And, and so as I, continued. I remember the first time I, I I started to use your service on my signs, I started to realize that people were actually calling in. Um, and uh, and so then it's okay, now we need to answer, we need to be ready. Right. And right. the result has been kind of astounding. It's kind of interesting, because what we always tell people is like the online lead, it's, you know, we often hear this at like, oh, people don't want to call anymore. Like they don't want to call the signs and things like that. And it's because oftentimes you just don't know because the vast majority of agents are running their mobile number. So they get missed calls and maybe you call back once or twice to follow up, but you never understood the context of where that call came from. So you just assume it's, you know, another Zillow telemarketer trying to sell you more marketing. So, but, right. but I know that you had mentioned that, you know, making that transition and starting to update your signs. You know, one thing we hear often is like, everyone's like, oh, I don't want to invest in a bunch of new signs. And I had mentioned a, a solution to you. <laughs> Do you, what, what'd you end up doing with that instead of buying, you know, 40 signs? Well, yeah, I mean, I had 50 signs and okay. the signs were around $50 each and right. that's $2,500. I was right. not interested to gamble 2,500 bucks. And right. so you had made reflective stickers, which I really, I didn't even know what that was. I just, I spoke <laughs> to my mother. I was like, I don't know what he's saying, but can you order this? And so we ordered 50 of these and, okay. uh, uh, my sign is white and I'm trying to hold it. Yes. So there you can yeah. see kind of the reflective. And so the, what the normally when you stick a sign, a sticker on the sign, it's like, Oh wow, they're kind of cheap. They, you know, they changed their number. But with this, there's an intentionality here to where I want you to see my number at night. And so right. it really goes unnoticed that I've made the change. And right. so we were able to integrate this and I've got $2 million listings that I've used this on and they don't, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't look like, I don't even talk about it because everybody right. knows that, oh, he put a reflective number on his sign. Like that's, that, that was smart. Right. Um, six months out of the year, it's dark at four. So <laughs> people are driving home at five. <laughs> and so immediately when we, we started to, to route the number, so you could, you know, there are a lot of services that can route a call to like 10 people, right? Like, like, you know, you're not the only product out there that can do right. that. Right. And, um, and so let me just speak to that first. First of all, directing the phone calls to salespeople that were eager to sell a home immediately resulted in business immediately. Okay. Uh, you know, I would say that right away when we started using your, uh, your routing, Mm -hmm. And on a very simple level and not really even understanding the product, we were closing maybe one extra transaction a month. Okay. What started to transpire though, is as you began to develop the product mm -hmm. and I was able to go into the dashboard and see, you know, this month, 70 people have called me on my uh, Zillow profile. This right. month, 80 people called me on my sign. And then once the API, I just, you know, it was good luck. I happened to be using follow up boss. You okay. happened to create a connection with follow a boss. And right. now 
I'm able to go into the CRM daily as a good team leader and, and look at, you know, how many calls, who's answered it, where did it go? Right. Um, and I track it. Okay. And once that started to happen, um, I was able to actually squeeze out an additional two to three transactions a month. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, um, let me give you an example. So uh, we had a listing in a, in a, in a great neighborhood, uh, average sales price, you know, 275. Um, and uh, we sold the listing fairly quickly, I would say in about 45 days. And um, I remember uh, a call was routed no, a text for info. Uh, we had purchased the call action riders and it was a text for info. Uh -huh. And I noticed that the address that call action pulled. So call action was able to pull the data from the cell phone number and say, right. hey, this guy lives two doors down. Okay. I knew that that was a potential seller. Sure okay. enough, sure enough, we had a listing appointment seven days later and we listed the house. Right. Uh, so being able to very quickly assess where the person lives, um, if they currently own or rent, and to be able to make a, a quick decision has been incredible. Um, okay. we're, we're getting listings right. off, of, off of tracking the inbound calls, which has also been very interesting for me. Right. So I'll, I'll elaborate a little bit on that. So as the call kind of comes in, what we're doing is a reverse data append off of the phone number. And we try and find all of the details about that person, which right now, all of that is transferred into your follow-up boss, all of the right. lead intelligence that we're able to find, including at times the address of the person who is calling. And so what you're doing is you're looking at that address that we're basically finding from that person, determining if it's, if they own or rent, and what you're looking at is if that person owns and are kind of in that neighborhood calling about the listing, they're probably really not a buyer. They're thinking about selling and kind of vetting you to see if you are going to be their agent that might represent them in the future. Does that sound? Yeah, okay. exactly. And then, but then there's been other times where uh, people have called off the sign and they wanted to speak to us to list their home just because we had a listing in the neighborhood. Which to right. me, like, I, I would want to read the reviews. That's the type of personality I am. So it was okay. very eye-opening that someone would say, I'd like to meet with you because you have a listing in my neighborhood. I mean, what if I'm bad at my job? Like, they, 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 right. that's not even a part of the discussion. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so what, what it's enabling me to do is uh, not be glued to my phone. Um, okay. The calls are being routed to my salespeople. And okay. I'm... I feel like I'm living the dream because, you know, I'm managing listings. I'm managing inventory, right. procurement listings, and okay. the calls are no longer being routed to me. And I'm able to track them. Okay. And I'm able to track how many times they're answered and how many times they're not. Right. Um, so it's been an it's been basically a new sales funnel that mm -hmm. uh, was always there. I just didn't realize it. And are you using our call recording and transcription on those phone calls right now? Or I am um, okay. on all my agents except for one. One of the okay. agents said, uh, my numbers speak for themselves. It's, okay. it's weird out that you recall it recording me and it's messing with my head. And he, and he okay. is, a, he's a very good salesman. Got if, it. if the calls weren't there, I would probably record and transcribe his stuff. So, but for him, okay. I turned it off. But everybody else, I'm actually able to read the conversation. And um, and know where they where they won and and also where they lost. Maybe um, for training purposes to make them better at their job, you can kind of read through and see the the common questions that the customer is asking and what the rebuttals are, so that you can develop your scripts better for training. Exactly, and okay. you know the answer rate initially for my team jumped up a lot because okay. of that text message that you sent. So okay. you know we're you know, texting me or my team saying, Hey, a Yelp call is coming in or a, a sign call is coming in. And so they're, you know, they might be selling or they might be at the grocery store and they get the text that says sign call. They, that, you know, that motivates them. They answer, right. they answer. Um, right. And, uh, and that's, that's also been a big plus. And, and so now that, now that I know that the sign call and the inbound phone call is a, is a, a money lead. Um, right. I'm of course them every two weeks reminding them, answer your phone, answer your phone, answer your right. phone. Uh, right. The, 
just it's super easy. You're, you really don't have any competition. So we're sending the text message before the phone rings and then to make sure that they also answer, they know that they're competing against everybody else that's in their queue because we're ringing everybody's phone numbers at the same time. So it's the first agent who answers gets the call. So that's where that's kind of working well for you is that spirit of competition and you're getting that hungriest agent at the top is what you were mentioning. Right. So with, uh, so I'm uh, I'm rated number one in my market on Yelp, and okay. so uh, that rotation was really important. And I had four agents on it, and it was going in order. But mm -hmm. what I was finding was uh, they were busy, and mm -hmm. um, uh, they weren't answering as much as I would like. And so I right. actually switched to call broadcast, and I told them, if you're on this distribution list, your mm -hmm. phones all of you are going to ring at the same time. And I'm going to tell you right now that. That was huge. That right. we're not missing calls on that distribution list anymore because right. everybody is is super motivated to claim and to to, to answer the right. phone. Um, and then uh, you with, have a little bit more free time too because the agent who claimed that call it's inserted in the CRM by the name of the agent who claimed it, right? So because I know that there's some CRMs where you know team leaders we hear this all the time. They're like. Yeah, I get a lead that comes in, but at the end of the day, I got to go back in and reassign. And so they're right. spending an hour or two reassigning all those leads compared to now it's just automatically flowed straight to the right person, inserted into their database and everything. Right. Hmm. So you're taking an untechnical inbound phone call, right. routing it into CRM. And uh, our Zillow drip, so when, when a Zillow inbound call comes in from call action, we've set up a drip with uh, your service and uh, we're able to, uh, we're, our response rate on that drip is actually 71%. Wow. So 71% of inbound phone calls from my Zillow profile, I'm, I'm one of the higher rated agents in my market. Uh, if the agent doesn't answer, which is not great, but if they don't, call action sending a text and at your uh, tutelage, we took screenshots of the profile, like, hey, here's an image of my right. profile, uh, just so you can remember who you spoke with. Right. Uh, we put a voicemail to them. Um, and 71% uh, and, and of the time, it's uh, they've responded. So they've responded. Yeah, yeah, that's been, that's been huge to be able right. to say to my agents, look, answer, but call action is supporting you on mm -hmm. that inbound call. And again, I want to reiterate, I have a drip that keys off of an inbound phone call. Like mm -hmm. that's, mm -hmm. that's been a big deal for us. Right. Huge right. Because it guarantees that the follow-up is happening. <laughs> and I think right now I have between two to $3 million of listed inventory because of inbound phone calls right. that I never would have got. I don't mm -hmm. want my cell phone number on anything anymore. <laughs> right. Right, because you want to be the rainmaker and not basically filtering all of those phone calls. You want everything, all of the systems in place to kind of distribute so that you can have the quality of life that you're aspiring so hard to work for, right? That's the reason why you're working hard is to hopefully get some breathing room and not work so hard. <laughs> so, hi, very interesting. Do you think that your agent's behavior has changed towards some of the leads? Because if they miss the call, and we're sending out the text message and you know, you're, as you mentioned, 71% of those people are starting to respond back. Do you think that the agents psych psychologically, are they more motivated to work those leads because now they understand like, hey, these are good leads because the people are responding? Have you seen you a, know, a change there? It's funny, I think that the change of behavior was, uh, started when call action told them where the call is coming from. Okay. I think just that, began to change their frame of reference because in their mind, they realized someone is standing in the yard wanting to know something about this house. Right. And that, that alone has motivated them. Um, and, and, you know, they're reading reviews about me and then uh, the, the, the lead is reading reviews about me. Right. And the result of that is they want to call and speak with me. Right. Now, um, I also had to do some training with that. Right. Uh -huh. So that, that handoff, I want Barry, but John is answering. Right. Like, right. What, how do we handle that? And so what I've trained them to do, and it is the truth, if it's a buyer looking in Virginia Beach, 
I've trained my agent to say, well, Barry and I work together. I'm on his team and I'm one of his buyer specialists, specialists in your market. Mm -hmm. Same thing with sellers. If it's a seller in Virginia Beach. Oh, actually, I'm one of Barry's listing specialists. Uh, let me get some preliminary information. Barry and I are going to review it. We're be in okay. Touch. Okay. So that soft handoff where people are expecting to get me, but they're getting one of my agents. And you know, you have to, you have to be able to help the person realize that they didn't get the wrong person. Because at first, right. some of my, uh, what do I do? They want you, Barry, and I'm answering. You know. Right. So, right. Right. Yeah. So a little bit of training there. Uh, yep. And what do you think was? You mentioned, you know, the the your agents understanding the context of where that lead is coming from. Um, we already know that, you know, if you're working online leads, half the time, you know, they're asking, like, are you the listing agent specifically? So it makes sense if they're standing in front of the property that they're going to try and call the listing agent first. But then if you don't answer, which is what was happening in the past, which explained the lower amount of uh, voicemails that were being left they would probably just use Zillow or Redfin or whatever app that they had installed because they're standing in front of the property and then instantly try and reach an agent. And then that would set off those calls like, are you the listing agent and so on and so forth. So that context, I think, makes sense. And so for you, are you using the data that you're capturing from these phone calls? Like since you understand that context right now and we give you the data of all of the inbound calls that came in from your sign call, do you use that to build Facebook custom audiences based on, you know, retargeting using phone numbers and things like that to really keep grinding down and staying top of mind with those most motivated customers? Yes, uh, we actually use Leads Bridge or Leads Bridges. I don't remember, okay. but it, it essentially is a uh, it reads the follow up box. Um, okay, and and it it, it kind of it's always live, and then it creates audiences in our Facebook campaign. So I'm able to take, you know, the call action inbound phone calls and retarget them automatically through this LeedsBridge service. Uh, mm -hmm. And so um, you don't have to use that, but for me, um, you know, it's all about simplifying the, the workflow and, okay. um, and being able to, uh, did I, did you lose me? No, no, I'm still here. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. No. Um, yeah, just being able to simplify it. But, um, you know, one of the things that you touched on that uh, has been very interesting is 60% mm -hmm. of my market is millennial home buyers. Okay. And it has been really eye opening. They, they're using the Zillow app. They're using Realtor app. They're using home right. snap. Like they've got all the pictures. They see uh -huh. the square footage mm -hmm. and that's the thing mm -hmm. that's been so interesting. And I think that's where the urgency is they're at the point where they want to talk to a human. Like, right. That's a really big deal. And, right. um, uh, and, and as you noted the other day, and what we found is sellers, before they become sellers or buyers, you know, nobody likes selling their house. It's miserable. <laughs> you know, you got to let stranger things, <laughs> but it's, right. it's fun to shop. It's exciting right. to shop. So okay. we're find a high percentage of, our inbound phone calls that are looking into real estate have a current home that they're in. And we have a, uh, a home transfer program where okay. we, we, we say like, oh, okay, you're looking to buy in this neighborhood. Do you currently have a home? Yes, you do. Okay, great. Well, we want to talk to you about how to transfer from your current home to this new home and all the process involved. Mm -hmm. And really it's a listing appointment. So instead of just saying, you know, I'd like to meet with you to talk about listing the home, that scares people. But the, the process of transferring from one home to the other, it eases their their concerns. And so those uh -huh. inbound phone calls are not just buyer leads. They're a the high percentage are seller leads. Right. Okay. And for trouble, so I'm trying to readjust basically the sound here. So let's let's take a look. Um, so on that that point basically that you were kind of mentioning in terms of um, that sense of urgency that they have, do you think that's because, you know, the internet or whatever has answered all of the questions it possibly can, right? So now really they've been hearing their friends and family and agents that they're talking to and, you know, every inquiry that they've made has told them, hey, the property is hot. When you see something you like, you better move quickly. Do you think that's the reason why they're calling? Is it that 
that urgency is it caused by that is this fact that everyone is telling them that they need they need to move quickly and then the, that's the hardest part of is finding the right house you know uh, i think sometimes it's that but what's what's incredibly eye opening for me is people have so much information right that they really, they really just want some help interpreting it okay um it's no different than when you look up stomach ache on WebMD, right? And that you know, there's 20 different kinds of cancer and 13 types of flu and mm -hmm. all these diseases. You want to go talk to a doctor where the doctor says it's okay, like and right. just just hearing the word from the doctor, it's going to be okay. You know, you, your stress level. Well, mm -hmm. this is the biggest purchase of someone's life. It's it's right. it's emotional. It's where your children have Christmas morning when you feel. Right. So scared you lock your front door and now you feel safe like mm -hmm. it's a very emotional process and that's mm -hmm. why like uh it's very interesting that we as an industry have kind of let go of the importance of the inbound phone call uh mm -hmm. because uh that is the emotional part the, the you know talking the connecting the relationship you can't right. automate a relationship you can't a computer right. not yet uh right. not have yeah. a relationship the way that we can. And, um, right. and so uh, being able to capture that, being able to say, yes, it's available. And yes, right. I'd love to show it to you tonight. There's right. actually two across the street as well. And, mm -hmm. and you know, the urgency suddenly calms and a point right. been hang up and they feel like they finally got somewhere. They're not lost. Right. right. Uh, it's interesting The NAR, I know that they've done a study and they've done this, you know, year after year after year. And they always address like, what's the three most important qualities that they're looking for in an agent and how do they select their agent? And number one, it's like 96 or 97 percent is, you know, responsiveness because you need to answer the phone first. Right. They want someone because they have a sense of urgency and they're going to feel like I'm in this emotional decision. I want someone who's going to be responsive when there's a crisis or if there's an urgency, you know, if there's a problem. Number two, basically, what's really interesting about that is that they want knowledge, someone who's knowledgeable and trust. But, you know, as you said, the industry has kind of put off these inbound phone calls and is trying to build relationships through email and text and think they're going to get, you know, just a lay me down deal. But if you think about it, you need to be responsive to have the conversation to show that you're knowledgeable, which builds the trust. So right. it's a very linear kind of process and you can't have you don't have trust up front unless maybe it's a you know an soi or a sphere of influence kind of business or a referral because that trust is transferred by somebody else to you but right. when you're reaching kind of cold leads like this which is basically what online leads are you need to earn that trust through your actions and then as you get the trust to carry the conversations then you earn the opportunity to show your knowledge and then basically you earn that relationship and build rapport. So it is definitely interesting how we're kind of offloading what seems to be the most important part of the business, which is that relationship and trust building and trying to put that off to the back of the transaction, you know, when really that's pretty much the most important thing. All marketing should be geared to get that person on the phone versus trying to not talk to them. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, there are a lot of blog posts and products right now to help you get reviews. I mean, it's, right. it's, it's big now is you got to have an online presence. Right. And what I have found is they, they read my reviews, they watch videos where I'm, I'm speaking to them mm -hmm. and they, they want to talk to me now. Okay. And think about it. They, they, they read the reviews. They're interested enough to talk to you about their real estate needs and you don't answer. And, and so, right. you know, You've lost, you've won them with the experience and with the um, referrals from other people that you've helped, but you've right. lost them already in the performance. Uh, and the matter is, I don't want to be always available. Um, I've got, uh, I've got a five month old kid right now. You know what I mean? Like right. I want to be present with my family and um, being able to charge my phone and put it in another room is something that I aspire to. And it's not right. that I want to be connected from my business, but uh, you know, I, I went through the real estate crash in 2008 and I know what it feels like to, 
uh, buy groceries with a credit card. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, mm -hmm. I know, I know that experience. And so right. anytime I have an opportunity to leverage what I already have, right. I've got 40 boards, 40 mm -hmm. listings mm -hmm. to be able to leverage that resource in a greater capacity. I'm mm -hmm. going to be all about because I never know where the next sale is coming from. Even in right. my, even in my career, I never know where it's coming from. So I'm going to focus on everything that I can. Do you find that um, having your team, you know, being so responsive on the phone, is that in all actuality getting you more listings? Because, you know, what we, the kind of the data that we see out there is this concept that, um, and again, NAR did this study and it uh, talking about the most expensive, most important qualities to selecting an agent. And one of them was, you know, on the buyer side, it's important, but on the seller side, it was even more important. And what we think ends up happening is maybe the seller is really a buyer first. So they're already experiencing what a consumer experience is trying to buy a listing and maybe calling on something that they're interested in. Because most sellers don't wake up one day and say like, oh, I'm going to sell. They're usually trying to accomplish some goal, right? There's a life event that happened that's causing the sale to, to um, happen. What do you think has been the impact on your listing business because you guys are more responsive on the phone? Sure. That so yeah, think of without growth? a doubt. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, we've absolutely procured more listings. Um, okay. and it started to happen a little bit more. And um, this is actually a sample rider. Um, oh, I, okay. I, I uploaded two pictures of riders that we purchased. Hold on, I gotta get it. There we go. Yeah. So, um, you know, anytime you have a listing sale, you have two options, right? You can okay. either uh, make it look like you haven't sold it so you get more buyer leads, or you let the neighborhood know you sold it. So right. um, this is uh, this is the rider I had made, and uh, this is a call action number. You can tell I'm all messed up with the webcam. Uh, this, <laughs> no is, this is a call action number right here, and, um, if you text the word value to this number, it's linked mm -hmm. to it's the, I'm using the integration for market snapshot okay. and that's, that's a uh, top producer product and okay. they text the value call action responds back and says, uh, you know, to get your market report, please respond with your email address, I think. And then, yeah. and then a, a form is, is sent back to the, to the lead. They fill it out. They hit submit. They get their market report. People are texting in, to get market reports. So I'm getting their address um, mm -hmm. when they text it in. I'm seeing when they open the mm -hmm. market report from top producers product. Call action is then taking that person's information, their address, social media links, uh, college education, how much money they make. They're taking all that data, putting it in our CRM mm -hmm. and tagging it. Mm -hmm. And they're tagging it text lists. So anybody that has texted in to get a market report, I'm able to quickly look at it, my follow-up boss and say, okay, who's checked recently for a, um, a market report? And I can create an audience of people mm -hmm. that have texted in to get market reports. And so um, it's just, it's, it's pretty incredible actually. And if you go, if you start looking for my stuff everywhere, Zillow, Yelp, everything has mm -hmm. text buyer for an ebook, text mm -hmm. seller for an ebook, text, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, so it, it's, it's that, that text for info has been huge for us uh, okay. because it does work really well. And I think you had mentioned, I've seen uh, in our private fo Facebook group, I think the first time you used that integration, you ran an ad and you say, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and try this text for info on a Facebook ad. Mm -hmm. And I think you ran that ad in, what was it like two hour, an hour later or something? Or uh, there was some story behind that that was pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, I actually got a listing appointment like within two hours. <laughs> they <laughs> texted you... for a market report. Um, wow. I ran a targeted ad to a neighborhood. I said, I just sold a house in your neighborhood for this much. If you're thinking of selling soon, the market's incredible. We have buyers looking. Text value to, you know, this number. And somebody texted in, got the market report. I did my thing, right? I, I called them and worked with them and got a listing appointment. We got the listing, sold the listing. Um, wow. wow. All in two hours. Two hours. Exactly. Uh, well, we didn't sell the listing in two hours, but uh, another one that works really well is text open, you know, text the word open to uh, this number for a list of open houses this weekend. Um, we have signs that we put out with other open houses, but really in my market, um, the Facebook ad that says, if you want to know what open houses are taking place this weekend, 
text the word open to this number and we run a targeted ad to the zip code. And um, I think the last ad I ran, I think we had maybe 23 people text in for wow. the open house. Um, and uh, I just got the open house data from Zillow. So right. it was just easy. And the best part of that is you're actually getting the most important piece of content, which is the phone number so that you can follow up with that person instead of sending them to a landing page and maybe getting them to fill out the form, right? You have a hundred percent conversion on the inbound text versus buying traffic, sending them to a landing page and maybe getting eight or 10% of people to actually fill out the form. So a big difference there. Is there a big difference in terms of the cost per click or impression or anything like that because of that type of ad? Yeah, I mean, it, it uh, because the call to action, excuse, you know, sorry. <laughs> no problem. But the call to action is uh, uh, the text. I don't want them to click. Um, right. It's incredibly um, mobile friendly. And actually, that's, I put that in all my, you know, market report mobile friendly. Um, uh, it's, it, it does make it look like sometimes that the lead, the, that the ad wasn't performing, like Facebook doesn't know that they're texting for info. Right. All I care is I'm getting the lead. And also let me speak to the fact when these leads come in from call action, if call action says the lead's name is John Smith, we don't call them and say, hi, is John Smith there? Mm -hmm. Right? Like that's not how we work. So what we do is the person texts for info or calls in from a sign and we miss the call. When we call back, we say, hey, my name is Barry with Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate. You called me on my sign in front of a property. I was just checking to see which one. Or right. you texted for open houses. Did you get the list? Right. Um, texted right. to get your market value. Did you see it? And then we use the LinkedIn profiles. We use the demographics in the back of our mind to subtly build rapport. So if the LinkedIn right. profile says the guy graduated from Virginia Tech, you know, right. somehow in the course of the conversation, we're going to try to talk about the, right. if there's a football game this weekend, you know, so we right. use it subtly to try to build rapport. Right. Rapport building. You're using that market knowledge to build rapport because rapport is really this idea that two people, that there's some commonality. So instead of you trying to have extended conversations, you could go straight into it and not guess if they like it, you know, right off the bat because you popped on their Facebook or as you're talking to them, you see that, you know, they're, they're a Virginia tech person, as you mentioned, right. very, very interesting stuff. So, you know, we are, are going to be conscious and kind of respectful of everyone's time here. We said this was going to be about 45 minutes or so. And so we've got a couple questions that are coming in. So we're going to open this up as kind of a Q and a, if you're okay with that, Barry, oh, absolutely. Uh, everyone that's kind of listening in, there's some questions you can do chat on the side here. So I'll just start going through a few of these questions that kind of came in. Um, let's see here. Uh, Alvin Tapia wanted to ask, you know, do you turn off your phone at any point in time? Like, how are you doing? What are you doing for your calls? I guess it seems to be kind of what the question is. Like, how are you managing your personal amount of time that's kind of um, taking place? Well, the call action numbers, my phone doesn't ring. Okay. Um, so I you don't take any calls at all then? It's <laughs> Okay. All right. I'm living the dream, man. I'm living the dream. Right. right. Okay. Um, and I tell all my agents the same thing. Um, mm -hmm. I want them to have the same quality of life that I do. Okay. And so I tell them, look, if you're eating dinner with your family and your phone rings and you see it's a Yelp call, I want you to make that call for your family in the sense of if you don't answer it, Call action's there to support you, and they're going right. to try to engage. Now, look, you can't run your business that way, right? right. You, can't, you can't run your business depending on an auto, auto text going out, but it's right. nice to have that support. Right. Um, and so quality of life with my agents is super high because I respect their time. So we don't we don't shut it off. Mm -hmm. um, we have Riley 24 hours a day, seven days a week for the, okay. for the internet leads, but the inbound calls, we don't shut it off because call action, the can the system doesn't shut off. It's always going to be right. able to send a text. Right, right. So it's kind of like every one of your agents has their own personal secretary to make sure that the conversation are still being engaged, but it's done through automation. And then I think the other important thing about that is, you know, the cell phone right now, what it's done for us is made us feel like we're slaves because we get a bunch of phone calls. 
And so now what we've done is we've changed our behavior and go, well, if I don't recognize the caller ID, I'm not going to pick up. And this is an interesting quandary for the real estate community, right? Because the people that are calling you, you're not going to recognize their caller ID because it's the first time that they're calling you. So understanding the call tracking to tell you this is where the lead is coming from. Now, you know, or your team knows that they don't have to answer every single phone call. But throughout the day, there might be five phone calls that they really need to answer or should answer, as you said, and you let them make that decision, you know, based on where they're at in that moment in time. If they're, you know, watching their kids school play, they don't have to feel a sense of urgency to walk out instantly to go and answer that phone call because they know that there's a little bit of support that's kind of happening in the background. Very, exactly. very cool. And let me speak to that. I don't have agents leave mm -hmm. because like I respect that and I've right. automated the background to supplement that. And uh, right. before, it was a missed call and no voicemail and nine right. times in, my agent didn't call back. Well, now right. I've got it in CRM. It's and in our CRM and we can mm -hmm. see it. And even if they did call back, the consumer wouldn't answer because they don't recognize the caller ID. <laughs> so it's like a double-sided right. problem, right? right. right. <laughs> so the, the subtle text kind of warms them up so that they understand like, okay, I'm communicating with this person and then they, they can book the appointment. Very cool. Right. So we have, uh, we have Rob here who basically uh, indicated, his question is, what's your opinion in terms of print uh, direct marketing versus online marketing? marketing and kind of what's your mix between the two sure. like you have uh, kind of a well i don't do i, I do warm direct mail uh okay. this, and i don't even know if that's a legit term but um for me if i'm relevant to a neighborhood i sold something i listed something i'm mm -hmm. going to direct mail them and i okay. do get listings off of it and i do right. use a call action number for the postcard calls right. and uh, so you know i've got 17 call action numbers right okay so, 17 different phone numbers in my call action profile that are uh, directed to different marketing. And um, I use CoreFact for my postcards specifically because they do the automatic CMAs. So that, okay. that they'll do an automatic CMA. Uh, hey, I just sold a home in your neighborhood. Here are some comps. This is what it says yours is worth. Call this number. We can discuss. Um, I just mm -hmm. listed, sold a $300,000 house, got both sides of it off of a postcard. They called in the call action number. Um, mm -hmm. And I was able. To, I saw. I saw that it was a postcard to the neighborhood that I had just mailed. So mm -hmm. I, I, knew I just mailed to this neighborhood, and someone was calling from the. It said postcard call, and you know. So right. We got As the you just mentioned that you know you represented both sides, and obviously that's the most profitable way of our business. Right, is right. being able to. You know, you can try and um, double side more of your transaction, and and every part of the country has a slightly different tone right. or you know word for that i don't know what do you guys say in, in your part of town basically i'm on the west coast so we call it <laughs> double end it you know but <laughs> cool agency, which by the way the buyer was procured from call action they called off the sign so. right so are you um do you see more of those types of transactions happening off of your existing listing in other words is your business more profitable right from the very beginning because instead of uh, going out and trying to list 20% more homes, you're actually just representing 20% more um, dual agency and making both ends of the transaction. So really you've doubled your income without necessarily incurring the expense to try and acquire additional inventory. Is yeah, that I mean, I think I'm squeezing every last juice uh, drop out of the berry. And what's okay. neat in this example, I procure them off of a postcard, they call in on my call action number, they call off the sign. I don't get that call. My agent gets that call. I mm -hmm. promise my seller that I'm not going to do true dual agency, meaning I'm not going to represent the buyer and the seller. Mm -hmm. I'm going to run ads and it's going to route to my team and they're going to sell the house for you. And it was a right. perfect example of that. And I got, okay. we got both sides and um, uh, it just worked well because everybody's getting routed the appropriate call at the appropriate time. Mm -hmm. Do you ever use any of that data? Like, let's say, you know, maybe you have kind of a tough listing. Do you ever use that as proof for like uh, a price reduction or something like that? Saying like, hey, here's, you know, here's our phone numbers and here's all of the call tracking that we've done off of, you know, yard sign or your very close to your listing. We know that we've generated all these inquiries. Do you sometimes use that as proof to the seller? Like, 
we need to decrease the price because it's not a marketing issue. It's a price issue, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, actually, I haven't. That's a great idea. And uh, we yeah. haven't used that data yet, but it's definitely, um, as soon as you said it, I was like, oh, that's, you know, that's a great idea. Yeah, we have some agents where, you know, like in the upper end of the listing where there's a big marketing spend, you know, let's say on the luxury kind of stuff, and they'll run one call action phone number on one sign. And all of the marketing that's done for that property is just done with that one sign and they re-tag it every, every time they get a new listing. So for that period of time, they know exactly everyone that's come in. And then what they do is when they get interviewed for that listing five doors down, they're able to walk in, do their listing presentation, show that they're doing call tracking, and then even pull up the list of like, I have 74 people that called on the last listing here. So if you list with me, we can instantly contact all of those people. Really right. interesting play in terms of picking up more listings and also leveraging that information for you know um, uh, price reductions and things like that. So we'll get through a couple other questions here. Um, Thomas basically asked, do you use Riley on all of these follow-ups from the text writer sign? No, um, uh, Riley, so call action is handling my inbound calls and w what call action is able to do is right when we list the home, we, let's say the, ad the address is one, two, three Smith street. Okay. We go to call action. We say, if anybody texts the number one, two, three to our text list, they get a link to either my website or a video tour or something like that with okay. Riley. That's not, that functionality is not, not uh, to my knowledge, it's not available yet because it's individual responses for individual uh, addresses. And it just, you know, right. it's not, not set up for that. And right. so Riley is uh, the perfect internet lead response system. Call action manhandles my inbound phone calls. And, mm -hmm. and that doesn't sound like a big deal to some people. And it used to not be for me, but mm -hmm. I'm realizing now, the amount of money that we're missing by not tracking and answering inbound phone calls, not to be the dead horse. Right, right, right. And because you're able to see kind of each one of your marketing channels, you can double down on whatever is working and, and start cutting off on whatever is not because, you know, the beauty of the internet is we can measure everything. Like, you know, exactly the entire history but calls, which is really the bottom of the funnel of all of that online stuff and the most motivated customer at the end of the day is a big giant black hole. It's a blind spot. And now by kind of implementing what you're doing, you're starting to have some insight in terms of what's happening because as you mentioned, you can kind of see, okay, they sent a, a text message off of the text sign and then they called off of that yard sign and then they call, you know, they look, um, called me on for my Yelp review or something like that. You can kind of start to see the history across your entire persona you're presenting online. I know that we have uh, Jason Walters, like he's one of our customers and he always mm -hmm. talks about that. He'll see basically someone inquire about a piece of property online. Mm -hmm. They'll send them an email inquiry. And then all of a sudden, like two minutes later, they're calling through his Yelp phone number. And so he's able to kind of piece those two, that history of what that customer is doing. So that insight of seeing that journey is pretty powerful, I think. Absolutely. Um, uh, weekly, yeah. the percentage of calls answered mm -hmm. is discussed with my team meetings. Nice. So you, you know, use that as almost like a service. It's a oh. KPI or, or a metric basically for your company saying, hey. Absolutely. Absolutely. We discussed, this is how many inbound phone calls we had. Let's assume half of them were garbage. Mm -hmm. you know, like, mm -hmm. I think Tuesday we had 140 over the last two weeks. I said, let's just assume that 70 mm -hmm. were a complete waste of time. Let's assume the other half mm -hmm. were ages. Mm -hmm. 35 legit prospects in two weeks, people that are right. urgent wanting. I mean, gosh, right. Right. Close 40% of them, that's like 17. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So those are real bottom of the funnel. So, yeah, it definitely makes sense that you see all of that that value in there. Uh, so we got, Tim, a couple more questions here. and We're going to start shutting this down in the next five or six minutes here. Um, Laura asked, uh, our primary market does not allow yard signs. What would you recommend in this case? Sure. So um, like, for example, with a condo, um, 
a lot of condos don't allow a yard sign. And mm -hmm. so the million dollar question is, how do you leverage the inbound call? Well, to that, I would say, how is somehow consumers are finding out about your house? Mm -hmm. And because it's whatever venue they're using, whatever mm -hmm. uh, behavior the customer or the buyer is using in your market, you want to be relevant to the person that doesn't want to click for more info. They mm -hmm. want to they want to call, whether it's mail, mm -hmm. whether it's your Zillow profile or your mm -hmm. Zillow listing, whether mm -hmm. it's um, targeted Facebook ads, right, with a phone number to call for information. Mm -hmm. There are people that would rather call you. And so however agents are reaching those people, mm -hmm. if you use a call action number, you're going to fire, find an increased conversion rate. Might be interesting. I'm just as we're kind of talking about this, and uh, I'm just off the cuff here. Maybe a sign outside of the condo project that says "text to view all of the listings within this project," especially if it's gated. <laughs> right now, someone, yeah. you, if you could put the sign in a location where you know you're allowed to put a sign, not inside of it, but maybe outside on the street. And on the weekends, now have people that are driving in that neighborhood that couldn't get into that condo project but know that there is something in there or like the particular project and they want to get some listings, this would be a nice bottom of the funnel, people who are interested in that market. So just kind of a thought off the top of our head <laughs> to, oh to try and address that. So um, let's see here. Um, we're uh, one of our other users, uh, Bill basically is asking, how do you, how do you really keep organized uh, when I answered everything, let me see here. Uh, request showings after running ads, many uh, going out for showings all day. I think he's uh, Bill's kind of mentioning like, how do you keep organized if you're getting some of the stuff that's coming in and you're still kind of running the rest of your business? Basically, it seems like his his question in reference well, it to you. like you're using call action and, and mm -hmm. people are calling. People are calling and you're mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so at least I would, you're I would, with the text message. Right, right. I would tell you that, um, uh, and this is a, probably for another webinar, but when I started to hire someone, mm -hmm. I hired myself back. Right. Okay. Every time I hired somebody, I got me back as a salesperson. And I jokingly say every time I, my assistant gets an assistant, I go up an income bracket. And so, mm -hmm. Bill, if it, you have a very good problem. You have lots and lots of people uh, contacting you. And mm -hmm. uh, the result is um, you need to figure out how to either hire somebody or use the call action uh, inbound phone call list and, and mm -hmm. kind of make those that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, very good. So again, we want to be respectful of everyone's time and we just wanted to say thanks. Uh, one person asked like, where do we get the signs and where stickers and things like that? Um, you could probably speak to that area. Did you just revisit back your original sign person or anywhere online? Or? Just okay. a local guy that does it. Okay. Yeah. okay. And uh, at the end of all of this stuff, right now, I know that you had mentioned that, you know, you're kind of seeing this growth that's starting to take place, maybe uh, representing more of the same transactions. I mean, if, and this might be really obtuse question, but, what do you think has been a, the direct impact by really starting to track phone calls and building in this system over the last year or so? And you're seeing something is kind of growing and you're measuring where that business is coming from. I think you mentioned somewhere between one and three transactions directly from a phone call that you can track back. So that's call it uh, 30 sides at 300,000. So it's 10 million bucks. Mm -hmm. um, in sales volume. So 3% of that is pretty decent. Um, <laughs> is there other metrics that you're kind of seeing? Like, has there been a direct increase in conversion on, on the online leads as well by being more ex accessible or answering more? Does that make sense? Like oh, yeah. if, because no, the service level is going up? Yeah. I mean, and, and you know, we all want ROI, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's what's so interesting about this. Uh, how much is call action? Right now, like what's the uh, price? Yeah, it depends if you are a team or a solo agent. A, a solo agent's a hundred bucks. A team a, starts at a couple hundred. Okay, so mm -hmm. I that that basically a couple hundred dollars to procure business off of places that I was already there, right? right. So like 
I'm spending $200 a month over mm-hmm. that's what $2,400. Right. And three transactions a month, $10 million. Right. Well, I mean, I don't know how many zeros. <laughs> that's what, yeah. I guess that's what I'm trying to say is by tracking this and getting organized and having the appropriate person answer, your mm-hmm. ROI is like a million percent because it's something right. that was there. So, so it's, it's, a big so deal. it's a, it's a little bit better than, you know, Zillow who touts that like, oh, I'm getting 4X off of my ad spend of 2000. <laughs> you can maybe add three zeros, four zeros up the behind that. <laughs> well, yeah, I just, I feel like it's uh, like you might have a fast car, but then you, you add turbo or whatever to it. Uh-huh. It's really like if you add call action to what you're currently doing, it's kind of like a hyperdrive for all of your marketing because you're just really squeezing in and making sure you're getting everything that was already there. You just didn't realize it. Right. There's so many people busy trying to get more leads instead of increasing the conversions on what they're already getting because the investment to get 500 more leads, which in turn is going to give you, if you, let's say you have a 2% conversion, you know, is going to give you 10 transactions. It's a lot easier to take the leads that you already have. And instead of getting a 2% conversion, get a 4% conversion. Right, because that's no cost, but it's the same outcome. In other words, of doubling your entire revenue by right. doubling your conversion at the bottom of the funnel. So it's definitely exactly. interesting. Well, again, um, we shared some documents and some stuff on uh, the text tool and some of the sign writer samples and everything as we were kind of having this chat. Barry, I just want to say thank you very much for the opportunity and for you sharing your experience because I think it helps people kind of look at their business in a, a slightly different way um, and, you know, is going to get them hopefully kind of moving forward basically in terms of not taking for granted those inbound phone calls because at the end of the day, those are the most valuable leads that you can possibly get and they're you know, all of your other marketing is really done to try and get that call at the end of the day. So, so I think it makes a lot of sense. So, all right. Well, everyone, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. We're going to basically end this and uh, we just wanted to say thank you. And hopefully you guys see some value. We'll probably make this recording available for further down the line. Thank you. Thanks guys. And we'll figure out how to stop this. All right. Uh, okay. One second. Stop webinar. There we go. Thank you, everyone. Really.